Hey fellas, welcome back to another episode here at the Mancor. Glad you're with us today. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk a little bit about some attraction and some stuff that comes up quite a bit in our interactions with, with women. And I had an experience this morning at the gym I wanted to share with you and just how powerful it was. So stay tuned and I will uh, continue to, to share some tidbits. If you are new here, the main core is a community for men digging to the core to find out who they really are, why they're really here, and who it is that they really want to become. Please consider subscribing for future videos. We cover three different topics here, masculinity, health, and relationships. So for today, we're going to talk about the uh, attraction of indifference. And, you know, our interactions with women are very telling about what's really going on with us as men. And, you know, it can be really frustrating sometimes to try and figure out what is going on and why, uh, you know, a girl may be acting a certain way, what it is that we can do to try and understand it, fix it, avoid it, you know, it can be very frustrating. There's a reason why they say you can't live with them and you can't live without them. So we're speaking very different languages and what, what I've really come to understand about women as actually, you know, I can actually credit to uh, Corey Wayne. So if you've been watching the uh, book review that I did a few days ago on Corey, Corey Wayne's How to Be a 3% Man, that book really, you know, changed my entire paradigm about, you know, how, how to understand the female mindset. And it has really, you know, it has really helped me understand not only myself, but what women really respond to. And I had an experience today at the gym that I wanted to share with you. So I was going about my normal routine. I love my Saturday workouts, but you know, I was in there about eight, nine o'clock and it was pretty busy. I was in there just doing my normal routine. I did, you know, maybe 45 minutes of cardio, jumped over and did the weights. And I happened to be walking past uh, a girl that was doing a lap pull down to go fill up my water bottle. Well, when I was on my way back, you know, her and I, you know, exchanged a glance and I just looked at her and I just said, Hey, what's going on? Well, I didn't say the full thing, but I just said, Hey, and I wasn't expecting her to, you know, stop what she was doing. I wasn't even expecting her to, you know, introduce herself. I, it was just me extending the olive branch, me putting it out there. You know, what most guys don't understand and what I didn't understand for the longest time is that, you know, if you see a girl at the gym and you go over and you say hi to her, or you engage her in conversation and she's a total stranger, you may think that you're, you know, going over there to try and play it cool or to, you know, not give off the impression that, that you want her, but you have to look at your actions because that same interaction women understand is, well, the only reason that he's talking to me is because he thinks I'm attractive or he thinks I'm hot or, or he, he wants to get in my pants. Right? So you may think that you're going over there to try and be a nice guy, but you ain't, fo you ain't fooling anybody. And I thought the same thing for a while, but when I walked by, I just said, I just said, Hey, that's it. And, you know, made extended eye contact with her. She was the one to look away and, you know, very pretty girl. She, you know, dark complected. She was in good shape, real slender uh, about my height, but you know, very attractive girl. And after that, I didn't stick around there. I just said hi and you know, I walked past it and I continued on about my day or about my workout. Now the interesting thing is, you know, this is where most guys go wrong. So it is important that, that you take the lead and that you put out the vibe or that you at least lead the interaction where you want it to go, right? So if you are, you know, hoping to get to know this girl or if, you are trying to lead the interaction in a specific way. You can't wait on your, on your heels for her to make that initiation. It has to be you. You have to be the leader. You're the one with the penis. You're the one that has to take the direction. That's what we need to do you know, as men is take the, take the direction to penetrate the world. You know, that's, we've done a lot of uh, discussion on here about you know, the, how men are designed and how women are designed, right? So you can't sit on your heels and expect that she's going to do it. You have to go out there and do it. But the important thing, the most important thing is, is that you can't have an attachment 
to any, any specific outcome. And what I mean by that is when I walked by to say hi and then continued on about my day, I was extending my presence and I was just simply acknowledging her presence, but I was able to walk past and not stick around and linger around. When we give off the impression that you know we're lingering around or that we're trying to fly underneath the radar or play it safe, we're not fooling anybody. And you know, women are they're experts at this stuff. You know, they've been dealing with this shit their whole life. So if you think that, you know, you're kind of getting away with it, you're just not. And without the attachment to any specific outcome, yeah, of course, I would I like to sit there and get to know her and talk to her, get her number, take her out and, you know, have a good night with her. Yeah, for sure. Based on what I'm seeing. Yeah, of course. But the fact that I was able to, you know, own my presence, let her know by just simply, you know, stating that I saw her, which is just the acknowledgement, just saying hi, but not sticking around and continuing to go on about my own mission, which was my workout. I'm here to do work, but you know, along the way I might encounter a really nice looking girl, which I did. So I didn't stick around and I continued on about my workout. Now, this is where the fun happens. So when you don't linger around or when you're not attached to the outcome, if you just let it go, if you never hear from her again, you never see her again, you're unattached to whatever the outcome is, what you'll find is that they will actually seek you out because that's what they want to do. That's what they're designed to do. They want to chase. They want to be engaged in the pursuit. They don't want it dropped in their lap. So it's important that you take the lead, but that you walk away without any kind of attachment. I'm gonna keep coming back to that. So when I walked over to a, a another side of the gym, and it was it was not, it was quite a distance from where I originally encountered her. Well, for the next, I would say 15 to 20 minutes, she continuously just, suddenly she became interested in the dumbbells that were sitting right in front of me and in the leg machine that was directly behind me and in the bench sitting right next to me. Well, you know, that's their indication. That's their indicator of, of interest. So what they do, and it's really cool when you start to really understand this, if you take the lead and, and you, you know, express that you've acknowledged her and you don't stick around and linger, you give her the freedom to seek you out and to really follow you or to put themselves in your orbit, which is where I'm going with this. So if there is a girl that, that you think has somewhat of an interest in you or that you've said hi to and suddenly she's just kind of showing up, well, that's not accidental, right? So. What's going on is she's either recognized you, she knows that you're interested, and she wants to make it easy for you to take the lead and either start a conversation, ask her out, um, ask her how her workout's going, whatever the case may be. So the, again, it's, it's really so important that you, that you approach this without any kind of attachment. If I never saw her again, and I may never, okay, well, you know, no harm, no foul. I am improving my social skills. That is part of, you know, improving your interactions with women. If you just suddenly only talk to the ones that you're super interested in, you're going to fail. So, you know, you do that with, you know, treat all women the same. You should, you know, kind of have a, have a take it or leave it kind of attitude and a, a very playful you know, social and, you know, good demeanor with every woman that you encounter, because, you know, that's going to build your confidence and it's going to be enough repetition for you to understand that, you know, when you do encounter somebody that you are really interested, in, you could just act natural. You're used to it by then. But the interesting thing is, you know, that after that happened, she just kept circling around, circling around. And, you know, the shitty part was that she was actually there with, with her boyfriend. And, you know, whether or not it's somebody that I hear from or I, there's any results, that's not the important thing. 
the important thing is, is that I looked at her actions. So she didn't say anything. And where guys tend to go wrong is when they listen to what she says, but they don't pay attention to her actions. She didn't say anything, but her actions, even with a boyfriend there, was that she was continuously glued to the area or whatever area that I was in after, the, uh, after that had happened. So, you know, that's being the leader, that's showing your interest, and, and, that's, being, and that's being unattached to whatever results. And as men, it's what we're taught and what we see in a lot of TV shows, movies, and, and TV and media is that you're supposed to be this all out pursuing Prince Charming, you know, stop at nothing to get a date or to get to know a girl, to get, uh, you know, her number, whatever the case may be. And what happens is that women feel like they're going to lose their freedom. And, you know, the very deepest fear that a, that a, that a man can have is that his performance in the bedroom is bad and that the world knows about it. I mean, we all, as men, we fear that. That is really scary as shit for guys. If we hook up with a girl and then she goes and tells all of her friends or tells everybody at work that you either got a small dick or that you sucked in the sack. Like, we deeply fear that. And for a woman, the same, uh, the same feeling of fear comes from when she feels like she's gonna lose her freedom. So when you're, when you're approaching her or when you're going you know, up to introduce yourself and you're kind of lingering and you're not getting away, that has the same feeling to her as the fear that you fear about, you know, other people knowing that you have a small dick or that you suck in bed. You know, it gives the same feeling to her as a stalker or a, you know, a rapist. I mean, I'm dead serious. If you talk to women, if you actually really get to the core of what they're really scared of, it's that. It's it's being with a guy that that she can't get away from. It's being in that situation where she's really helpless and doesn't have a way to get out. So you create that circumstance when you just linger and you don't do anything about it. You know, it's, it's really hard to be able to walk away and, you know, not have the outcome that in your mind you think that you want or, or that your either ego or that your, that your urgency, your, your dick is telling you, but you have to be able to separate yourself from whatever that outcome is. I know it's super tough, but I'm telling you, just try it out a few times. And it doesn't necessarily have to be with, with women that you are trying to either attract or get to know. Just try it with, you know, other people. If you need to try it with, you know, other, other women who you're, you have no designs on at all. It doesn't have to be in that same way, but you know, they really do appreciate when a guy is giving them the freedom and the time and the space for them to put themselves in your orbit or put themselves or, or for them to seek you out. Again, they're physically designed to receive a man and they're not going to take the, take the initiative and lead the interaction. You must do that but you must do it in a way that allows them the opportunity to kind of think and be, you know, with their feelings, kind of get to, you know, let all the emotions settle and really understand who you are. And a lot of times you'll see that they just kind of watch you from a distance. So one example, this is so key. So one example that Corey Wayne gives in his book, How to Be a 3% Man, is the similarities between how men act like dogs and how women act like cats. And if there's anything that you take away from this video, it's, it's exactly this. So we have all been around a dog that, do, dogs just don't understand the concept of rejection. They don't get it. So what I mean by that is if a dog's continuously coming up to you and it's all like wagging its tail or whatever and you push it away because you're either allergic or you don't want to deal with it, they don't get that. They just don't understand. What do they do? They come right back to you, right? So even if you, you know, push them away or, or tell them to get off, they, they just, they don't do it. So that's kind of how guys act. And your goal is to be different. So now think of the same concept, the same interaction with a cat. It doesn't work the same way at all, does it? So what I mean by that is, 
let's say you go over to uh, you know your friend's house or you know the neighbors or whatever and they have cats well the cat's just not going to come up and run up to you and be like okay hey it's a neighbor whatever wag the tail and like you know some might but by and large cats need to be encouraged they need to really understand who you are before they will be comfortable around you so what you'll see them do it's really pretty cool but what you'll see them do is they'll kind of watch you from a distance and they'll uh you know they may even come into the room and act like they don't really care about you or they're not really affected by you and what's interesting is that they will actually go to the one that is least affected by them and if you're getting all wound up that you know she's not paying any attention to you she's not warming up to you at the speed or pace that you want if you're getting all wound up and worked up because of what the cat is doing you the, you will never get the cat to obey any commands or to you know come over and sit with you like you want it to or like a dog does it just won't happen so they often go to the one that they're least affected by and this is the same way that you have to be with with women and it it's actually most effective with the most attractive women because they're not used to it they're used to guys just kind of hanging around and, and clinging to them and, and clawing onto them and that makes them feel like they're going to lose their freedom they, they they just it's like suffocating so you're creating the conditions of 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 a very deeply seated fear within them and it's important that you understand that you know, if you go about it in a way that expresses your interest or expresses your acknowledgement that you've noticed them and that you're not attached to whatever outcome, not only is that a strength, but it, it creates a sense of freedom for her to, to choose you out. You know, back to the cat example, if the, you know, if the cat's kind of wandering about the room, you may be there 10, 15, 20 minutes, half hour before you know they finally understand who you are after they've kind of walked by a few times and they get a little bit closer they brush up against your leg you know it could take some time you know you're building trust it's not just so immediate like it is with a dog but you know if she if the cat then sees that you're not really affected by whatever it does suddenly after a period of time after it knows that you know whatever it does it can't really knock you off of your center that it will come and it will sit on your lap and it will purr and it will, you know, rub up against your leg and it'll, you know, it'll, it'll want, it'll want you to pet it. I mean, that's the same exact way that guys act like dogs and women act like cats. So if there's anything that you take away from this video at all, it's that know that when you, when you act without an attachment and that you're, you're leading the interaction, that you're doing it in a way that actually facilitates really good feelings and really good freedom in her to come and choose you. Whether or not she does, we're not, you know, we're not fixated on that. We're not about the outcome. We're about, you know, just leading the interaction. And we're giving her the time and space to be able to come and choose. That's that's what real alpha and that's what real men will do is they're not attached, they don't have that one eye to syndrome. And you know, they come from an abundant place where if women choose them, great. If they don't, that's great too. We are going to continue to be the man that we were before we even had the interaction. So don't act like a dog. Know that women respond just like cats do. So thank you again for tuning into another video here at the Man Corps. Please like the video, share the video, and please do share the channel with anybody that you feel would be good contributors here at the Man Corps. I gotta run, fellas, but thank you again for tuning in to another video here at the Man Corps. Cheers.